Welcome to part two of our video tutorial, Symantec Backup Exec Server 2010, configuring on Windows Server 2008 R2. Next, we will create a selection list of all the critical data. Under the Job Setup tab, right click in the bottom area and select New Backup Selection List. The first step will be to provide a name and description for the list. Now, we will need to select all the resources to back up from the list below. First, we will select the backup server itself. Once that is done, we will exclude the volumes X, Y, and Z since those volumes are used for storing backups. Now, we can check and see that the data on the D drive, the Windows system on the C drive, and the Microsoft SQL database have been included in the selection list. Next, we will move on to select the data on the domain controller running the new remote agent. This can be selected from Favorite Resources, Windows Systems, or by browsing the domain. We will select the entire contents of the domain controller. You may notice that the backup server also appears under Favorite Resources, we are not going to select it here since we have already selected it above. Now we have selected all the data within our test network. Let's move forward and review some of the other options for the selection list. Here we can see how to adjust the order in which the resources are backed up. We will leave these selections to their defaults and move on. Next, you can test the credentials used to access all the resources. If any tests fail, Backup Exec will not be able to access the data for backup. There are also options for adjusting the priority and availability of these resources, as well as assigning notifications and preferred servers to the selection list. After reviewing all the available options, we will click OK to create the new backup selection list. Now with the media sets and backup to disk folders created to organize and store the data, and the selection list to designate what is to be backed up, we can now move on to create the backup jobs. We will select new backup job, and the first step will be to designate a selection list for this job. We will choose the one we have just created and all the selections will be visible in the window. Under device and media, we will select the yearly backup to disk folder and media set since this is the yearly job. We will leave the option to append to media and then overwrite. This is so the job will append if possible before overwriting. Under General, we will designate a name and description for the job and also ensure that it is a full backup and using hardware and software compression. Please review the other options as we go for other items that may pertain to your configuration. We will cover many of these other systems and options in future tutorials. Under Advanced Open File option, we will want to enable this and allow Backup Exec to automatically select which open file technology to use. As we review the remaining lists of settings, we will stop and verify that the Microsoft SQL Server options are set to perform a full backup following a physical consistency check as part of the backup job. After reviewing the rest of the options, we arrive at the scheduling settings. We will schedule this job on New Year's Day for the next five years. Once those dates have been selected, we will need to choose a time window when the backup will be executed. The window for this job will be from 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m., which will provide an entire day for the job to begin. After the schedule and all the options are set, we will click Submit to create the new backup job. With our year-end job created, we can now use it as a model for the other jobs. Right-click on the year-end job and select Copy and then OK and another instance will be created. Select the properties of the new instance and begin configuring the monthly backup job. 
Copying backup jobs allows us to save time and be more consistent in the job configuration. We want to begin by changing the device and media set and then the name and description of the new job. Since all the other options are correct, we will jump down and edit the job schedule. We will schedule this job to run on the first day of the month, however, we will exclude the first day of the year as to not schedule too many redundant backups. Now we need to change the time window to between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. because months can end during the week and we do not want to run a full backup during the business day. With the month end job completed, we are going to move on and create the Saturday job. Once you change the device, media set, and rename the job, we can move to adjust the schedule as we did the monthly. This job will run between 12 a.m. and 11.59 p.m. on every Saturday to perform a weekly full backup. Once that is complete, we can create the Friday job. This one will be similar to Saturday, except this job will always overwrite the data from the previous backup. Also, we will run it between 6 p.m. and 7.59 p.m. as to not intrude on the production schedule of the business or on the Saturday job. Next, we will create Thursday using Saturday as a template. Thursday will be different from the others because it will be a differential backup, which means it will only back up the data that has changed since the last full backup. Once the job name, backup type, device, media set, and schedule have been changed accordingly, you can go ahead and submit Thursday to the server. Now for Monday through Wednesday, we can use Thursday as a template to create those remaining jobs. Once we are done, we will have a comprehensive set of backup jobs that will run differentials throughout the week and full backups at the end of each week, month, and year. You may notice that there is no Sunday job. This is intentional to allow ample time for the Saturday job to finish completely. Now, if we had virtual machines in our test environment, they would utilize file level differentials throughout the week and a full file level backup on Friday using native operating system agents. Then they would perform full image level backups on Saturday using VMware or Microsoft virtualization agents. All these backups will be stored in the proper locations and retained for the appropriate period of time. With a thorough and complete backup scheme, business stakeholders and their IT staff will be able to sleep a little more soundly at night knowing that a rigorous, well-planned backup system is in place. Now, this is a very simple test network used for demonstration purposes and there can be many more options that are specific to your particular infrastructure. Regardless of the target network, be sure to plan your backup systems in detail prior to implementation. Thank you for joining us, and if you found this tutorial video helpful, please subscribe to Nextara, our YouTube channel, and visit us at our website, www.nextara.com. Thank you.